Are you curious about acrylic ink and how to use it? Then this video is just for you. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today's video is all about acrylic inks. I couldn't find hardly any informational videos on YouTube regarding acrylic inks, so I wanted to make one as I'm sure others out there are just as curious as I am. In my previous video unboxing Art Snacks ink collection for 2022, they included this bottle of yellow orange Liquitex acrylic ink, and I loved it. So I went out and purchased some more to play with and possibly do Inktober with. I actually already had this purple one I showed in an older haul video, but never got around to using it. I knew right away I wanted a set of primary colors to test out mixing. I surprisingly got this essential set from Michaels with a 20% off coupon, which made it cheaper than on Amazon. So definitely research your options before purchasing. Unfortunately, my Michaels did not have the other individual bottles I was looking for, and I have no other local art supply shops. So I purchased these other three off Amazon. I will put links for everything in the description below if you're interested in picking some up for yourself. My thought process was since I already had an orange and a purple, I might as well grab a bright green to complete my set of secondary colors. This would also save ink so I don't have to use a lot for mixing as these are pretty expensive, ranging from about $7 to $9 per 30 milliliter bottle. Then I grabbed a transparent raw umber and a carbon black for good measure. You could just purchase this pack of six at a slightly discounted price, but just an FYI, the yellow and the blue are different from the essentials set, and I'm not sure why they would do that. So what is acrylic ink? On Liquitex's site, it says they are ultra fluid acrylic with light fast artist quality pigments. No dyes, no fade, just pure permanent color. And like all acrylics, it dries quickly and permanently with no smudging or bleeding when re-wetted or layered. They currently have a range of about 55 colors as seen here. They also have some iridescent or metallic colors, some fluorescent colors, and a set of muted colors. You can also click each individual color to get the pigment information, opacity level, and light fast rating. All this information is also located very clearly on each bottle. So as stated, it says that they are made of artist quality pigments that are finely ground. And here is a perfect example. So this is the bright yellow orange is as you can see, all the pigment has settled here along the bottom. It's hard to tell with certain colors, but you can also see it with this green. So you'll definitely want to give it a good shake before use. And now you can see that the bubbles are at the bottom. So we know that we have mixed all the pigment that was settled at the bottom. So now it's time to finally swatch out these colors. And let me tell you, a little bit goes a long way. I put way too much down of this red and orange while I was getting used to the consistency. And they are highly pigmented if you cannot tell these are super vibrant they do however dry very matte unless there is a lot of buildup in a certain area which will give a little bit of shininess like acrylic paint but these are mostly matte from what i've seen i did notice that the transparent colors were seemed a little more thin such as the yellow and the lime green so i had to use a little bit more when making my swatches also these dry super fast so trying to get smooth gradients was a little difficult especially since i didn't have colors mixed up and i was just pulling them straight from the bottle which you can do but it just you just have to move and work a lot quicker or pre-wet the page, which I did not do. Next, I moved on to the primary color wheel. And for this one, I was just using the three primary colors, which was the Naphthol Crimson, the Cadmium Yellow Light, and the Cerulean Blue Hue. I wanted to just use these three colors to see how well they would mix with each other, since it was the essential set. And 
the blue and the yellow were great. However, the red, I feel, was a little too dark. I wish they included more of a magenta pinkish color because then I feel like the purple would have turned out a lot brighter and not so dull. But other than that, these were perfect to play with in terms of learning to mix colors because it was nearly a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of using the dropper. It was super fun and I feel like besides the reddish purple part, they got generally good mixing colors. If you are interested, I made printable templates of all the color wheels in this video that you can purchase on my website for just a couple bucks. You will receive a download file that you can have and reprint as many times as you'd like. These are great exercises to use in your sketchbook and you can use them with any art medium that you like. Now for this second color wheel, it's going to be a little different than the previous one we did. The very center circle of this one is the essential colors that we just did. The middle circle is the secondary colors that I purchased, and these colors are straight from the bottle, and I'm using a combination of all of those colors to make a variety of shades around the color circle. Now say these bright colors are for you, and you want something maybe more pastel or more muted. What you wanna do is now create a color wheel with hue, tint, tone, and shade and you're going to need a white, which this is not the Liquitex brand, this is just an acrylic ink brand that I already had in white, and that's why I did not purchase a white in the Liquitex brand, and the black that I did purchase. I also have one of these flower palettes, which has the six wells on the outside and the center one, which is perfect for this particular color wheel because it lines up with how many colors I have. So I'm going to put a drop of each color in the well. I'm going to do the hue color first, which is going to be the outside. And then I'm going to add the white and we'll take a look at what kind of pastel colors we can get. Let's get started. I'm quickly going to speed through the hue or the pure color, which is going to be the most outside ring. And then we're going to jump into the tint, which is hue, plus white and what I did is I put one drop of white into each color but I quickly noticed that this was not going to work out because some colors were more opaque and darker than others such as the red and the purple so I had to go in and add a lot more white for those ones in order to get the nice pastel colors that I was looking for. Then moving on to the tone circle, which is hue plus white plus black or hue plus gray. I mixed up a gray color in the center of my palette and then added it to each of the colors, but I also noticed that I made my yellow one a little too dark and so I went back in and added more of the hue or the pure color to it to make it less dark and more uniform with the other colors that I was going for. And again, this is something you just have to play around with and experiment with, and it's a great learning exercise to do with your colors and your paints to get a feel for how your colors and paints react when making a painting. Finally, I did the shade, which is hue plus black, and I did a huge mistake by adding the black directly to the wells that I already had mixed with white, but shade does not include any white at all. So I pushed that palette aside and started fresh with the pure color and black only. And again, this is something you have to play with because the black can be so overbearing that it will take over a color and you won't get any of the color. And you still want a hint of the color visible. So this again takes a lot of practice and, and these color wheels are something I highly recommend doing. Now here is the color wheel completely finished and the paint all dry and I highlighted where each of the hue, tint, tone, and shade were in the circle, and then I just decorated the outside with a few 
splatters and dots of the colors but you can see even the dark circle has a hint of the color still in it which is what you are looking for these are great to use with shadows and painting so that you're not using pure black which can make a painting look very flat then finally I wanted to show you a sneak peek of next week's video using these acrylic inks to paint these poison dart frogs I'm so excited and can't wait to see how it turns out that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something as well. If you are interested in more content like this, then be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified the next time I post. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!